So in this video, what I want to do is to calculate some simple examples of line integrals of vector fields. So we're going to be calculating this integral over some path C. And to make this concrete, I'm going to use this vector field in two dimensions with Cartesian coordinates. And first of all, I'm going to look at this. And this is going from the origin to the point two zero to the point three, sorry, to the point two three. So this point has coordinates two, three. And after that, I'm going to calculate the same vector field and the line integral, but now over a different path, also starting at the origin, also ending at the point two, three but following this route here. And we're going to see that we're going to obtain a different value. So if you'd like to, you're welcome just to pause the video, try and do it, and then just skim through and see if you get the correct answer. And if not, I'm going to do this one first, and then after that, you could pause the video and look at this before I calculate the integral over this route. Okay. So let's look at this path and this vector field and calculate the line integral of the vector field. So what I've done here is I've just written out our vector field and I've shown again the path that we're going to be calculating. And the idea that we're going to use here is that we can divide this line integral over this path from here to here into the line integral from here to here and then the line integral from here to here. This is very much like with a normal integral where you might say the integral from a to c of some function is the integral from a to b of the function plus the integral from b to c of that function. So we're breaking it up into bits and I'm going to say that this path here is C1 and this path here is C2. So let's calculate these two terms individually and then just add them together to get our answer. So what does the first one mean? So the integral from C over C1 of f dr is going to be as follows. Well, over C1, what we are changing is x. We are only changing x. y is constant. So our integral is going to be an integral of x with y is constant, and in this case, y is 0. And now we take the scalar product of that with dr and all of the changes in our path as we go along here are just changes in x. So it's just dx i and this is a scalar product. So what we have, c1, is the integral of f1, the x component, of our vector field over x with y equals zero, and this is now integrated with respect to zero, with respect to x. So what I've done here is I've just taken the scalar product, and this is giving us the x component of the vector, which I'm calling f1. And to integrate along this route, we are integrating x from zero to 2. So the integral that we have is the integral from 0 to 2 of, now this is f1, so it is x e to the y, so it is x, but remember that y here is 0, so it is e to the 0, and e to the 0 of course is just equal to 1. So I'll just cross it out and that's integrated 
with respect to x. So what we obtain is a half x squared evaluated between x is naught at the bottom, x is 2 at the top. So from the upper limit, we're going to get 2 squared, which is 4, but multiplied by a half, so we're going to get 2. And at the lower limit, we are going to get 0, because x is naught. So our answer for the first part of our line integral is 2. The second part of the line integral we can work out in exactly the same way. So what we do is we have the integral over C2 of F2 integrated with respect to Y because our changes in dr here are all changes in y. But as we go along here, x is constant, it is equal to 2, and y is changing. So that's what we have to calculate, and that is the integral of y from 0 to 3, starting at 0, going up to y is 3, and f2 is equal to x times y, and x, as we have said, is 2, so this is 2y, integrated with respect to y. So the integral of 2y is 2y squared over 2, so it is y squared, and this is evaluated from 0 to 3. We're going to get no contribution from the lower limit, and the upper limit is going to give us 3 squared, so it is 9. So that is our answer for the second part here. And our line integral of the vector field over the total path is just the sum of these two contributions. So what we see is adding these results... tells us that the integral over C, the whole path of f dr, is equal to 9 plus 2, or 2 plus 9, it's equal to 11. And that is our answer for this line integral of a vector field over this path here. So the key steps were, we saw that this was a straight line parallel to the x-axis, and then it changed into a straight line parallel to the y-axis. So we broke up our line integral into the sum of the two parts. And for this part, y is constant, it's equal to zero. And therefore we are carrying out this integral here. And the changes in dr are all along the x-axis. It's just dx times i. And then you work out the scalar product. It's very simple. i times f is just the component of f in the i direction. So it is going to be x e to the y. And you put in y is equal to 0. And that gave us a very easy integral. And the answer was 2. And in the same way, when we calculated this, x is constant, x is 2. The changes in dr are all in the j direction. They're all going in this way. And it gives us, in the same way, this integral here. And f2 is here. And all we have to do is replace x by 2 everywhere it occurs. And that just gave us a factor of 2 multiplying the y. And at the end, we added these two values together, and that gave us our answer for the entire line integral of the vector field. So on the next slide, I'm going to calculate the integral 
line integral of the vector field, the same vector field going from here to here again, but now going this way. And if you'd like to, you're very welcome to pause the video now, have a go at doing it, and then come back and see if you're happy with it. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So now we want to calculate the line integral of the same vector field with the same starting point and the same finishing point, 2, 3, but now going this way. So as before, we're going to break our line integral up into two parts, the part from here to here, which I'm going to say is again over C1. C1 now de de defines this path here, and then over this path, which I'm now going to call on this slide C2. And I've just written out what F is again. So on C1, all we are doing is changing Y and X is a constant. So what we are going to have is the integral of F with scalar product of F with dr. And the changes as we go along C1 in R, our position along the path, are purely in the J direction. They're just changes in Y. X is constant. So dr is the same as dy multiplied by j. So we are taking here a scalar product of f with j. And that will therefore vanish because the scalar product of i and j vanishes. And the scalar product of j with itself is 1 because j is a unit vector. So what we're going to obtain is, let me write it slightly more formally, it is f2 and x is a constant and x is actually 0 and y changes and this is going to be integrated with respect to y and it starts at y is 0 and finishes at y is 3. And now we can just look at f2 put x is naught in and we see it vanishes. So what we have is the integral from naught to 3 of 0 with respect to y and that is 0. So the first part of our line integral vanishes. What about the second part? Well in the second part we are going to be integrating over our vector field along this line here, which is parallel to the x-axis. That means all of the changes in dr are changes in x, and y is constant, y is equal to 3. So we're going to be integrating, and only x will change, and it goes from 0 to 2, and the scalar product again is going to just pick out f1 and now x is going to vary and y is fixed at 3 and we are integrating over x. So what we have is the integral from 0 to 2 and if we just go back and look at f1 that's the component of f in the i direction it has the form x e to the y but if y is equal to 3, we have x times e cubed. So we have x times e cubed with respect to x. Now, e cubed is a constant. We can pull it through the integral and put it outside. So all we have to do is integrate x, and that's going to give us a half x squared. So we have e cubed times a half x squared evaluated between the lower limit of 0 and the upper limit of 2. The upper limit is going to give us 2 squared, which is 4 divided by 2, so it will give us 2. And at the lower limit, we're going to subtract 0 because x is naught. So the total answer for this is 2 times e cubed. So 
what we have is the integral over C2 of F dr is equal to 2e cubed. So adding these two results that I've underlined in red, this one vanished. Our total answer is therefore just coming from this integral here. And what we see is that our line integral over this path going along the y-axis and then along the x-axis is going to be equal to 2e cubed. And that is different to the answer that we obtained when we went along the other route, first parallel to the x-axis and then up parallel to the y-axis. And that's an example of how such line integrals can be, and generally are, path dependent. There are special important cases where if you are going from a fixed point to another fixed point, the answer is independent of the path, but that's something that we can talk about later. So I hope this has given you a little bit more confidence with calculating line integrals of vector fields over lines that are parallel to the axes, either the x-axis or the y-axis. With that, I'll stop.